What is up, Ninja Nation? We are here with Michael Fish from Codify, and we'll be discussing the sweeper, the brand new f fad, fad, is it a fad? That's sweeping the nation. Um, and before we get into that, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. We need you as part of this great community. What is up, Mr. Fisher? What's up, Rob? Thanks for having me. Pleasure oh. to be here. Well, we've been talking about sweepers for so long, and I know you do charts for basically, you know, almost a who's who of major league pitchers. And I was curious, um, a bunch of things about, about sweepers. I mean, obviously I know what they are. But for those who don't, why don't you help explain what a sweeper is and how it how to distinguish it from a regular slider? Well, right now, when you watch a telecast, you see the sweeper designation, but the our friends at StatCast have to figure out if they think a pitch is sweepy enough to call a slider uh, or a sweeper or leave it as a slider. We, we've seen a lot of guys re-engineer their slider, and you might watch it on TV and think it's sweepy, and they don't call it that. So technically, it's a, it's a designation given by StatCast to some pitches and not others. Um, some guys already threw these. It's not like no one's ever thrown a, a high horizontal movement uh, slider, which it would now be pretty clearly called a, a sweeper. Uh, but just it just depends. Uh, there's some I think you would see that you'd say that's a sweeper and it's not and, and vice versa. But generally speaking, it's the higher has, uh, horizontal sliders. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that the pitch doesn't have vertical, too, because every pitch literally has vertical drop to it. Um, so if you see it dropping. And you're like, well, why is that a sweeper? Does not move straight horizontal? Well, nothing really moves straight horizontal, but it's ones that have predominantly more horizontal than others. I like to say it's kind of like every square is a rectangle. A sweeper is a slider. It's a form <laughs> of slider, uh, but it's a special form of slider that has more horizontal break. That sounds fair. That's a good, good way to think of it. I mean, we've definitely got into um, a world where there's, you know, 10 different pitch types or 12 or 15 now, instead of there used to be four. And, and now we're, I think we're, we as a group, not just us, but the population is starting to appreciate that, damn, every pitch is different. And, you know, it's interesting to see that start breaking out and, and people start to recognize and appreciate those differences. Yeah. And, and, and two things I like, there's still a bunch of old school baseball fans are like, I don't like this term sweeper. They're all just sliders. And I mean, you can call it whatever you want, to be honest, but I don't, to me, number one, it had, it was a pitch that was being developed by a ton of teams and using seam shifted wake properties and other stuff and deconstruct why these pitches move a certain way. Um, it's a unique subcategory of, of the pitch. It doesn't mean that it's a new pitch kind of been around for a long time. If you look at Dave Steve's slider, it's arguably a sweeper. But we didn't really know why it was moving the way it was. It was just hat like, hey, do this grip and maybe it'll break this way. But it moves differently for everybody. Um, so to me, it's important, one, for a pitcher to say, hey, I need something other than my gyro slider. That's more of a bullet spin that goes straight down. And also for hitting coaches to say, hey, this guy's got both a sweeper and a slider. So you may want to watch out. He's going to attack you vertically and horizontally instead of what do you call it then? He's got two different sliders. It helped you envision both from a pitching standpoint and a hitting standpoint. Yeah, some guys have have uh, re-engineered it and add sweep. Uh, some guys still throw both. And I, uh, you know, and you can rattle off the good pitchers that probably haven't done more than say, why, sh why would I do that? Why would I add a sweeper? I can throw this gyro slider uh, right where I want. And I'm already throwing it from two or three feet over to the side across them. I'm already getting a lot of like uh, effective movement, even though it's not, you know, the, the stats tell you it moved five inches. It's like, yeah, but it moved five feet horizontally from his hand to where it arrived and he can get it where he wants. So it's interesting to see. I think I, I can speak from experience that a good number of guys have asked ahead of time, like, Hey, I'm going to go in the tunnel. It's November. This sweeper thing sure sounds sexy. And I already got, eight inches on mine should i should i add more and the answer is not always yes phrasing mr fisher oh god what am i thinking <laughs> Come on fisher all um, right everything i say yeah so um, another good point you just made is that just because you see a pitch that looks like it's going across the zone doesn't mean it's getting that movement from spin on the baseball it could be the trajectory that a pitcher takes from position on from position on the rubber arm slot like Nick Lodolo's pitch isn't considered a sweeper, I don't believe, but it also 
breaks it, it 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 has a big trajectory because he has a low arm slot and is way over on the rubber and releases way on the side. So the approach of the pitch makes it look like it's breaking a lot, even though the spin isn't really what's causing that that horizontal break. So it might not get called a sweeper because it's sweeping from trajectory versus spin, which trajectory is equally as important. And we kind of ignore that sometimes in pitch categorization. Right. Yeah, some guys probably shouldn't even try. I, I think your favorite maniac on the Guardians, who likes to throw fastballs and curveballs that drop out of the sky. It's like, what would he have to do to still disguise that pitch and get sweep on it? It'd, he'd have to abandon his arm slot or throw, throw something that's visually different and it would just mess him up. So that's an easy one, but um, there's a lot of guys that that just shouldn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, I uh, was thinking about your friend Jake Diekman and my friend as well, and he did it via more of a just a grip change that you gave him. But but same kind of thing is like, man, if you can turn that reasonably good movement into something crazy where they can barely even catch it, then of course it's going to be good. Is there an arm slot that we're talking about usually for a sweeper? It's definitely like a straight over the top is kind of really tough to get sweep on a pitch. You're going to be really attacking. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not going to want to, number one, because you will probably have to drop your your arm slot to be able to do it. I, I've been really interested to see um, there's guys who have tried to get more sweep and, and you know, sure, if you're lucky, you can just change your grip and throw the same one. You're probably not. Um, so how how well can you still disguise it and keep it in the same slot? Um, some guys can't. And what's happened as, is as they have this deviant, sorry, uh, sweeper. A grip an arm slot and all that it's a little different it's pulling some of their release points for their other pitches toward it and kind of fouling it up so it's pretty interesting yeah let's talk about that a little bit like who would you say has been ineffective or less effective at adding a sweeper and then we'll talk about some of the more effective ones um that come to mind yeah i don't you know i don't have all of Senga's stuff from last year handy but i know uh, i've noticed this year that they're not really swinging out of the zone at a sweeper much and could it be i mean because that pitch would be unique like he has a cutter that has mm -hmm. just a little bit of break he has the, the ghost fork obviously and it may be that that's an easy so a, a sweeper isn't one size fits all and it's not one size fixes all either if people no. can pick it up right out of hand it's very easy to either lay off it and say, Hey, I know what this is. I'm not going to swing at it. And that may be the case. It just doesn't tunnel well, or doesn't disguise well with the rest of his pitches. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of these sweepers that are a couple inches out of the zone, but they fooled the hitter so bad. They didn't swing. They didn't trigger the swing. And it's like, suddenly a, a really good pitch is too good. And it becomes bad. It's that's fascinating. A, and it happens a lot. That's a great point. And so when you're doing charts for these guys, that's part of what you have to take into account is like, Hey, this pitch is going to move a lot and it may right. be so good that it ends up out. of the So it's going to be a, it's going to be a, uh, a red pitch, I guess in a, in a red mm -hmm. part of zone, because you can't give it a blue cause it's not going to trigger a swing. Yeah. Some guys have surprising uh, non blue just outside the zone where normally you would see a ton because they're sweeping in a certain way that doesn't trigger that swing. Um, on the other hand, they might see like a, if you backdoor sweepers are crazy if you have a ton of sweep because you're throwing it so far away from when the hitter's looking, you don't trigger the swing. Um, that hasn't really been abused as much as I think it will be as we as we move on. As guys get more comfortable with their extra sweep. Yeah. So um, I know Kevin Kelly had about a perfect one this year where it was something like right. 22 inches of sweep <laughs> and just barely caught the zone. Um I think Tanner Houck's had one, but I, I'm naming them because I remember them. And it right. seems like a way, especially if you ever get to, to robo umps, because I, it's a tough pitch to pick up as a hitter, but also as an umpire, you may not get the call because the umpire kind of may give up on it too. If you have a robo up or robo zone and you clip a little bit of the zone, that's a strike. And that's almost like in wiffle ball where you're just catching the, you know, the hard zone that you may set up. Right. I mean, 22 inches is ridiculous. If you go walk off 22 inches from this corner of the plate and imagine that that ball started out at that point, I mean, you literally have batters not just taking it, but they kind of drop their shoulders like I'm gonna, I'm not gonna swing at that. It's not that's that's a non-competitive pitch, and this thing comes back and catches. To your point, 
a seam of the baseball on on the corner of the plane. It's a strike. It's going to be something else to watch for sure. And then it opens up tunneling because I, I find that hitters have a tough time picking up spin. Well, in general, they mm. have a tough time picking up spin, but especially when a pitch starts that far off the plate and it will tunnel very well with a fastball that is a good bit off the plate too. So if you start getting in a habit of swinging at those pitches, you're going to swing at a lot of fastballs off the plate if you're trying to protect against a sweeper that just catches his own. Right. I did look at the other day at uh, just random guys in the tunneling. It's just fascinating. I mean, you think about uh, Otani, who has obviously an elite sweeper, but where is he tunneling his sweeper to go away from a right-handed hitter versus a fastball that he's trying to catch and slay the outside? I mean, it's like the different zip code. It's not nowhere near. So, um, you know, if you're tunnel, if you're trying to tunnel and you miss your tunnel by six inches or a foot, that can really be a good trigger for the hitter to go, hey, this is different. But if it's three feet different, I mean, what did that do to both of those pitches? You can't watch all that stuff. And that's why you see some of these insane, feeble swings or non-swings at these pitches. Yeah. And I think people out there really need to understand that hitting is really tough. And we assume these guys have superhuman ability that they can pick up spin and they should be able to know out of hand that that's a ball. Well, not necessarily, because as we're saying, things with big break that maybe catches the zone mm -hmm. um, or can catch a zone in their head. Like a hitter saw it, it caught the zone one time. Now they're like, oh no, I've got to watch for this. Don't necessarily pick up spin well um, as a hitter in general, especially at a high spin rate. They just see a blur. And now you're swinging at fastballs out of the zone and getting yelled at by fans like, why did you swing at that? And it's because you're also going to get yelled at, why did you take that pitch that ended up in the zone if you just totally give up on pitches that are outside the zone? Because it might be a sweeper that catches the zone. Mm -hmm. Right. So did I say enough good about the sweeper? Yeah. Now let's hear some bad Be about it. Because it is a fad. And it's always good to have an extra sweeper that you can command and control. And and uh, God bless you. You show the the best ones and they're effective. And when one, when, when one nails the spot and makes a guy look bad, it's it's sexy. It looks great. We're not seeing the fact easily that it's a hell of a lot harder to control and command a 20 inch <laughs> horizontal than a five inch one. And guys are missing a lot and it's hard to appreciate that, um, but it's happening a lot. Now, here's here's something to think about that I really just thought about this morning was, you know, we have these rule changes. We have guys kind of flattening out their swings a little bit because they don't have to try to hit it over that shift. That's not really helping the pitchers against some of these pitches depending on their path and here's the thing the slugging if you if you break all the sweepers and the sliders put them all together and don't worry about the designation okay and cut it on a foot of horizontal the ones that are breaking less than a foot we're seeing pretty much the same results but for the mega sweepers the 12 plus inches slugging has gone way up this year versus last year up and a lot of it, I think, is um, guys are like, this thing breaks so much, I have to compensate for this to kind of get it close and competitive, and they're missing into the zone a lot. And you don't want to do that. Yeah, that's that's really interesting because part of it, it used to be the fad was everybody's going to attack north to south, right? Like mm -hmm. you're going to want fastballs that rise, breaking right. balls that go straight down. Now we have this, which it can be good or bad, uh, but you think about it, there are also a lot of pop-ups, right, on sweepers, from what I understand, is that hitter, and I think it's because if you have a little bit of a, we'll call it a launch angle swing, I kind of hate that term, but you're swinging slightly up, and you're getting a pitch that goes down a little bit less than you think, it maybe intersects the bat path in a different way that causes you to hit under the ball, is what I'm assuming. Right, if you traded in some drop for horizontal and it's dropping less it's you're throwing it over the bats a little bit more you're definitely seeing a lot of end of the bat top of the bat uh hit uh, contact on these sweepers for for sure you're it's not your imagination now i did a a, a breakdown of zach wheeler last weekend on peacock and he mm -hmm. throws both a slider and a sweeper his slider is a fat a hard slider like it's basically a cutter and he added the sweeper this year so you can see the big difference of the two and i understand that's a dip totally different attack um who else throws two different distinct i mean i guess otani's are categorized different. i think, think bat doesn't bassett throw bassett both? does bassett does right. it with arm slot though too like right he's, he's a weird weird dude great creative pitcher that i can see him using that very well like he can mm -hmm. do i mean he thinks everything through i think some of these guys that just follow the fad 
may could potentially be burned by adding this pitch if they can't command it that ends up catching the zone too much. Right. And like we already said, like, how does it fit into how, where you're attacking, where you're tunneling? Um, if you look at a guy like Corbin Burns, who is a bad example because he's not the sweeper guy, but what he does throw is all kind of tunneling together a lot, a lot more than a normal pitcher. Where would he put a sweeper into that? DeGrom. Same and, would, thing. and would it be effective? And DeGrom. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I was thinking about him this morning, too. It's like what? It's you know, a useless why, pitch. Why should he throw a sweeper? Why? Honestly, I was, you know, I say that almost with his changeup, which is getting pretty good. He's working in a little more, but he does one thing. So this is the difference between some pitchers. Like one pitcher, like Jacob DeGrom, is perfection at what he does. It's glove side fastballs, glove right. side sliders, and you can't do anything about it because he also throws 100 and his slider is really fast too and has amazing command. Guys like that maybe don't need to add something other guys like Shohei has monster movement on almost everything he does. He's just, that's why he's so much fun to watch for me as because it's every time you put something out there, everybody's like, Oh my God, that pitch moves so much. Moving that much. Isn't always great for everybody for exactly the reasons you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks really cool. I mean, it's one of those things that's like, wow, look at the way that moved. Right. I think we've said a number of times when we've spoken that uh, we I think we both agree that DeGrom benefits from in, in terms of uh, effective command from he's always going with every pitch, 80 percent or whatever it is to that side and to to step away from that. Now, you wouldn't tell a pitcher to do what he does. You'd tell him to get good at moving it around. And why would the hell would you want the batter to be like the ball is going to come out of this spot every time here it comes down this tunnel? But you would never. You wouldn't want 100% or 90% of their pitches, but it's DeGrom. So it doesn't fit him. Otani, I mean, God, there's another guy that makes this look so easy, but that sweeper is hard to, hard to command. And, you know, it ditched him for one inning last night or yesterday, and you saw what happened. Yep. But that's just one inning. I mean, this guy is crazy, and he's throwing more of them. And uh, even though those slugging numbers are worse that I mentioned for the mega, the mega sweepers or whatever, that's not because of Otani. He's, yeah, he's actually making it look better than it is. Yeah, and one thing. So, I mean, I know I hear people like, "Why are we? Why are we seeing all these sweepers?" Well, the trend in Major League Baseball has been, I think, it's like three times more right now, uh, sliders that break more than a foot. It is a thing that teams right. have been designing. The Yankees specifically designed this. The Dodgers specifically designed this. The Yankees were calling it a whirly slider. Pitchers don't even know why sometimes it moves the way it does, but they'll give them a baseball and say, "Hey." If you make the ball move like this, it'll right. basically catch a seam and seam shifted wake takes over versus just the normal Magnus effect on a baseball. And it will move. You don't have to know pitcher why it does. It just will do this. Trust me. And, and it, and it does. So we've scientifically engineered this pitch. So it is a unique pitch that everybody's working on, not just a stat cast. Let's invent a new term. Cause we like to. Uh, people were calling it something different in clubhouses. Pitchers were calling it something different and, and StatCast basically caught up to that, this trend. So people out there that have been complaining about seeing the word sweeper, it's for a reason. It is happening more and more and it's deliberate. It has always been around as a pitch. It has always been there. Somebody has thrown it. David Cohn, probably with his Laredo slider, mm -hmm. was a sweeper too. Right, right, um, but probably. it's just now we can teach it to more and more people and we know why it moves the way it does. Right. Here's the thing. Again, I, I've said a lot of good. Here's here's the thing. The numbers have gone through the roof. OK, you're a, if you're a batter, you're seeing this a lot more. You can devote yes. a lot more time to defending against this. And it, it's the, the effectiveness of the average sweeper is lower in itself because batters see it more. So it's just another thing to think about. I mean, th four years ago, what are the odds of you seeing a 12 plus inch? sweeper slider whatever they called it back then not not it's what what is it a third something like that of what yeah. it is now it's some ridiculous yeah number. it's about a right exactly right it's just like the fastballs like 96 used to be like oh it's 96 kick ass and now it's like everybody's going into the cage prepping for 96 97 and it's almost like why a guy like um granted it's a bad example because he's got a unicorn fastball but we were talking about justin Steele. yeah it's like but why a guy can throw slower and you think, how can you be good at 91, 92? I mean, it's almost like a changeup because these guys aren't prepared for the, the norm of what they prepare for is changing. And now it's including a sweeper. And, you know, you're just, you've, you've prepared for that more than before. So Hitters catch it's not up. This, 
Yeah. Right. Hitters always adapt and always catch up. And why wouldn't they? And so you don't, if you, if you jumped ahead of the curve three years ago and decided to throw it like Griffin Jacks is throwing like 75% sweepers or whatever, you know, if he had jumped into that three years ago, he would have got more out of it. Yeah. That, and okay. that's, a, that makes a, the other point for those out there is like hitters have these machines that can replicate pitches. Yeah. So not only do they see it in games, but they're also seeing it in practice going, all right, I know when it's coming at me. I know this is going to break over the plate. I've seen it over and over again. It's just like everything else that you do in life. The more you do it, generally the more comfortable you get, the slower heartbeat you have, the better you're able to recognize and the better able to do something with it. So as you see it more, as it becomes a trend, then it becomes a, it's a fad that ends up dying out like like uh, beanie babies. And again, are you are you right handed batter? Am I right? But yes. All right. So you're up there. I'm right handed pitcher, and I'm throwing you sweepers, and you know I'm going over there, and I'm going at that edge, and all that stuff. And now this year, instead of seeing th- a wall over there or whatever's happening, the 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 defense is playing you straight up. So you know you're just the swings are just different now, and you can you can see the differences in launch angles. They're not trying to hit it over shifts and stuff. And that, that all plays in. Now, granted, the sweepers are usually away from the hitter, and he didn't usually see a wall of guys over there anyway. But you're just they're just a little bit less concerned about smacking it right at somebody and just trying to hit the damn ball. And the swings have flattened out a little bit, gen- very, very generally speaking. But that helps you hit a sweeper. Are there anybody? Is there anybody else that's added one that you that jumps out at you like this was a good move? This is this is a uh, an awesome pitch for this guy. I think we were talking about uh, Tyler Malley, maybe? We were. um, He was an example as well as, I think, uh, Garrett Whitlock, who these are not classified as sweepers. Yeah. So you're, I mean, I don't don't think you're even going to watch him throw and go, it's not a sweeper, but you kind of watch him. Why isn't that one? They're clearly different than the sliders they used to throw. But sometimes when a guy has a certain arm slot, it's like, well, it's not sweeping, so I can't call it that. Yeah, Yeah, but it's. The spirit is there, and there both of those guys are getting much better results out of their slidery, sweepery, whatever you want to call that, than they were before. And I, I, it's not hard to imagine. It's because of the separation, larger separation from what they had before. So, hey, if you can command it, you know, God bless you. If you could command a sweeper as well as your five, you know, depending on where you use it, do it. It's not a, it's not a blank check though. You still have to hit spots and. If you've if you haven't thrown if you've thrown six inch uh, sliders your whole life and now you're throwing a twelve or thirteen it's not a given that you're going to know where that's effective you you probably can guess mostly but you won't guess it all the way. It, great point because I remembered uh, Max Scherzer saying that it takes him three years to develop a new pitch like that's one reason probably he hasn't developed the sweeper is he needs to know it's easy to change grips. The hard part is knowing how to how to use it and how to sequence it with other pitches and who it's going to be effective against. And for him, it takes him three years of dealing with hitters to figure that stuff out. Maybe quicker if you had heat maps. I mean, you could replicate it pretty quickly and say, oh, well, this would move like this and be like this guy's arsenal. So this probably is going to be effective for you. But there are little differences, I would assume, between pitchers like that. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten pretty good at guessing what it's going to say, but we yeah. we have removed the slider that a guy has and plugged in a hypothetical sweeper to see what it will do. And, you know, like I say, I've, I've done it enough that I can guess, but sometimes there's surprises and it's like, hey, okay, I, I guess that's right. And Scherzer would be interesting because it's hard to really appreciate until you click pause to how far over off center he's releasing these pitches, including this gyro uh, slider. You know, what is he? He's already getting so much effective movement and he can put that sucker where he wants. What what is he getting out of a sweeper? And what would it look like? And would it be easier to pick up and all that shit? So mm-hmm. I, I don't think he has a strong motivation to to change. I'm sure he thought about it. Yep. And and again, another really good point. When you see a pitch move and like Scherzer's, you're looking at a slider gun, man, that slider moves a ton. It may not move that much if you're looking at movement profile of the pitch because we're right. looking at spin as opposed to where he's positioned on the rubber and trajectory. So to, for everybody out there, sometimes you'll see a changeup that looks like it broke the wrong way, but it really didn't. It's because of trajectory out of the pitcher's hand that ends up going this way, even though the pitch is fighting that by the right. spin. 
The best example I had, and I, I still think of it constantly, it was Blake Trinan. I uh, started working with him, whatever that was, five years ago. And it was just when I was starting to fully appreciate, you know, perceived movement. Insane. Yeah. Right. But back then before, and he's he has added more slide to his slider. But back then it was like zero inch, one inch. like, yep. And you're like, there's no way in hell <laughs> that that's right. It can't be right. Yeah, but it was, but it was because he's letting go over here. He's planted across the the plate to the other side. He's tall, all that, and it looks like it's breaking a couple feet. And it's not. It's not. It's a gyro ball that gravity's taking and going. That's all it is. And in conjunction with the the camera angles, it so, seems that we should have some words for that too. Like I think that freaks out fans and players too more than that. Like there should be a category, and maybe there is, and I'm not thinking of it that includes hmm. trajectory in the model. Like this guy has a gyro slider, but it also comes at a weird trajectory. It's a blank pitch. Like hmm. we don't have a name for it. We just don't. And that would be useful for me because I can help explain it, but it may be useful for hitters, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Our stuff's, our stuff's weird because um, we try not to put names on them for our own stuff as we analyze, because that limits your, how how you analyze it but we have to put a tag back on it to communicate to the pitcher right so for every guy we're kind of pulling apart their pitches like these are distinctly different pitches versus oh my god this thing could go anywhere um analyzing and then trying to put it back together some guys are like just call it a slider another guy's like that's a sweeper i'm like that dude that's a curveball it's <laughs> it's going 75 miles an hour and dropping straight down now nah, but it sweeps down okay fine we won't argue we'll call it a sweeper on your maps but <laughs> When we evaluate it, we're going to evaluate it against other pitches that move the same. Yeah, I think Lodolo calls his a curve, or it's called a curveball, but there ain't no way you're telling me that thing's a curveball because that thing no. is, I mean, it, it ends up behind hitters regularly. It's, right. but it's partly, again, because of his angle and because of how he's releasing it. Is there anybody that has, that you would say should think about adding a sweeper off the top of your head? I don't want to put you on the spot if there is somebody that you. Oh, you know, I'd have to look and, and think about it. Um, again, I would probably look at um, the guys who have been successful that I didn't think were just being lucky so far and, and look at where um, that pitcher, how he attacked and how he tunneled and see how, how different it would be. Really. It's, um, you know, every pitcher has been so different about their ability to add it. And some guys, I mean, like Liam Hendricks, like he could throw a sweeper. He could throw anything he wants. That guy blows me away. Like we were playing around with they this threw knuckleball. A knuckleball in the all-star game. Yeah. He threw the fastest knuckleball, fastest in, knuckleball ever. Okay. Yeah. in major league history. Yeah. Uh, 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 I won't say that we're playing around with the splitter, but let's just pretend that we were, <laughs> you know, but the stuff that he can do, like, dude, you, you got to kill some RPMs on that. And he's all like this. And he does this. Like, that's not normal. He could throw a sweeper, but should he? I don't think so. He's yeah. kind of benefiting from that north south, and he's got the plan, and he's got that way to go, and it's too that's too alien to go. Splitter fits in, I think, nice. Right, because of the down. I yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Or like a uh, a Giolito too is very over the top type guy, right? right? So he would be a tough guy. Right, to we've add. talked about sweeper as well, and we're like, eh, that doesn't doesn't fit. Yeah, doesn't so it fit. should be somebody with. Someone like, I mean, I'm thinking like Kyle Wright, maybe who has, but his curveball does the job. For yeah. Him. I, don't, I don't know that he really needs to add anything. I mean, he's right. He's done pretty well with that. Morton, same thing. Um, right. Yeah. Just not, not sure. But hopefully, uh, is there anything else you want to add about sweepers? No, just that, just to reiterate that it is, I hate, I, when you call it a fad, you, you know, on the other hand, you like, uh, you discount the, value of the good ones the value of a good sweeper is enormous if you're lucky enough to either have an elite one that you can say screw it i'm going to throw this all the time and you can't do anything about it then fine we're not talking about you but otherwise you got to blend it into what you're doing and that's that's tough and we are not seen at a macro if the sweeper is automatically better and this is all great and if everything you kind of implied is true the results would look better and they're and they do not so at a macro level this isn't better it's just a different thing and it's not even it's it's such a fad that so many guys jumped on the wagon and now hitters have gotten the, the benefit of seeing it more and watered down all of that macro automatic results so i i think you asked at some point uh, what are we going to see i i think i think you're going to see guys step away from it i um 
some, I don't mean all so for sure. Um, but I think guys will start to, as they use it more this year, especially the ones that haven't kind of appreciate like, oh, that's not. It's not helping it me. Like I'm having bad results. It's it's blending into my other pitches. My other pitches. Why is are it? Suffering. Yeah. Right. Why is a pitch good? And you you don't say you don't answer that in terms that it's good because it moves. It's good because it's fast. You answer it's good. Did it trigger a swing? Was there contact when it swung? If there was no swing, was it in the zone enough for the umpire to call to strike? If there was contact, what kind of contact? That's how you answer that. And you're going to see a lot of guys with like, uh, I had to start my sweeper in the middle. And it's just not triggering swings. So it doesn't matter. I'm not, it's not, it's sexy as hell, but it's not triggering swings. So who cares? Cause it ends up a foot out of the zone. So I, it's reminds I think me of you're back, guys step out. It reminds me of coaching, you know, high school pitchers. Everybody want, did that move? Oh, that had sick movement, sick movement. It doesn't, and a, it doesn't matter. Cause these guys are professional hitters. What you need to do is there has to be something unique. Well, ideally unique about what, what your approach is. If your thing is an outlier, right. um, outlier, slow outlier, moving the wrong way, outlier spit something that the hitter can't practice against it. Isn't using, isn't used to seeing then right. it's a pretty, and you can command it. It's used to, it's, it's useful to attack. Right. Look at the splitters coming back. You know, guys, everybody wants to throw one. It's just, because Japan easy. just killed the whole world right. with it. Like they it's just true. dominated with it. It's true. But, but the WC WBC made a lot of guys come back to the table to horse around with it again. It did. And some guys are, and some guys will, and it might take a year, but it's not that simple. But right. then again, you'll see the same kind of thing. You'll have a pocket of these splitters are so damn good that it doesn't, nothing else matters. Okay. It's Kevin Gosman, right? It's like, yeah, you, you come on. Say, everyone yeah. knows he's thrown it. What it's that's an elite one, but then you'll have a lot of like, this is good enough to throw, but now, you know, now there's a hundred guys doing this 10% of the time and they don't throw it enough to command it well, and it doesn't look good. And so it's just not that good. And then you'll see guys step away. It's the same thing is going to happen with the sweeper. Yeah. I mean, Gosman's obviously, you know, really well, but yeah, um, I, it's just like his, his, his maps have to be like totally blue for you, his splitter. That's insane. Dude, like the, his... that, there's <laughs> no one. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody I'm including DeGroms and guys like that. It's, a veritable ocean of blue and you and there's so many times to look at it and think this has something's wrong damn it <laughs> i know i know i've thought this before but let me go back and look and then you go look and you're like well i can draw a line a foot and a half off the ground and it's in the last couple of years it's got 500 swings and no extra base hits and like of course it's blue down there it's just a matter of how big and how white but it's gigantic you know and it's is, is there anybody with a with a sweeper that comes to mind kind of like that is show what's i haven't even Otani is pretty Otani is pretty blue out out of the zone to the to the side. Yeah, the, to a right. Some of the swing. Do you see some of the swings he get? Like, yeah, yeah. It's 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 crazy out of the zone in the middle of the other batter's box. Um, and I assume it's it's a blend. Also, velo has something to do with it because right. as a hitter, the more velo a pitcher has, the more pressure there is on you to make a decision. And sometimes you make wrong decisions when you're under pressure. Um, right. It's an early right. decision. Right. Where are you looking when he bat against Shohei? I mean, where, where are his non-sweepers coming from? And all of a sudden here comes this thing. It's just, just different enough, but you don't have time. You can't hesitate. And now you're screwed and you see these crazy swings and yeah. that's, he's, he's found the right balance and uh, <laughs> he's thrown a ton of them. He's thrown more than anyone. Absolutely. All right. Well, Hey, thanks for coming on and helping explain the sweeper and the complexities of it and why it, it may be, it's not going to go away, but it may peak and trail off a little bit and then we'll be on the splitters which will be a lot of fun too and we'll do this again we'll talk about splitters i look forward to it awesome thanks man thanks for having me take care